Hello and welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer and today I'm reviewing the Canon RF 15-35 2.8 LIS USM lens. I've been using it in combination with the R5 and the rest of the Holy Trinity, as well as some of the other lenses that Canon has made available, and it has been a really enjoyable lens to use. It costs just over £2,200, which isn't cheap, but is more affordable than a Nikon 14-24 2.8S, which is the equivalent lens, and that costs £2,500. It's also quite a bit smaller, which I really appreciate. It is a nice lens to have in combination with the R5. It weighs just over 640 grams, 200 grams less than the Nikon lens, and has an 82 millimeter filter thread. They've obviously achieved this by giving us a 15 millimeter rather than 14 millimeter lens, but as I understand it from Canon's lenses, and apologies if I get this wrong, but I think their other 2.8s in the past were 16 millimeters, so this is actually an improvement over their EF series lenses. Now, with regards to using it, I've used it in a variety of locations because the lockdown restrictions have lifted, which is great. And this is a wonderful landscape lens and just sort of general purpose lens, in my opinion. I've always liked the ultra wide angle um, look and feel, but where I've really enjoyed using them is in indoor spaces. Whether it's um, indoor architecture or indeed events or concerts, I really like what an ultra wide can give you in terms of atmosphere and the feeling of being there. Of course, we aren't actually allowed to do anything inside yet uh, with other people. So as a result, I wasn't really able to test that out as much, but I did get a lot of time with this lens shooting outdoors and I'm fairly certain that it would be a great concert uh, lens if I had the chance to attend a concert. Let's all hope we do very soon. I actually quite like the 15 millimeter focal length. I didn't miss it. I actually used the 16 to 35 F4 from Nikon for all those sort of internal uh, photography opportunities over the years before I moved to mirrorless. Now I have the 14 to 30 F4, but I really think that this sort of harks over to that 15 millimeters is plenty wide. There's only a few situations where I went, oh, I wish this was a little bit wider. Um, so that's good. I also like the fact this has image stabilization built in. It's something across the range of Canon's RF lenses I've been impressed by. Most of them do have image stabilization and in tandem with the R5's in-body image stabilization, you can really handhold down to about one fifth of a second quite successfully. Now, obviously that's great for taking landscape shots or even just, you know, internal shots when you want to keep the ISO low, but still want to use, um, you know, get a usable photograph. But the other part where it's useful is for video. Obviously the um, R5 has great video capabilities and I did take a couple of videos with this and it, it looked great and surprisingly stable, even handheld. Obviously it doesn't look as good as if you were using a gimbal, but if, if you don't have one and don't want to get one, this is a solid combination for that nice wide angle. I thought that the image sharpness, clarity and contrast was outstanding. I really had no niggles there at all. In terms of using the lens, it has a nice amount of controls on it. You have an autofocus manual focus switch, which is great, always nice to see those, and a switch to switch on and off the image stabilization. Then you have a nice zoom ring, which feels very smooth. One thing I've noticed about Canon's RF lenses is that the uh, zoom rings are very easy to manipulate and you don't need a lot of force, which means you're not, say, moving it around too much on a tripod, which is always appreciated. The manual focus ring, again, is super slick. It's not actually connected to anything. So this is fly-by-wire in the same way all of Nikon Z lenses are. This is not a major issue, uh, in my opinion, you get used to it, but obviously you kind of need to learn how the lens reacts. And then at the front is one of my favorite things is the control ring. Now, Nikon tends to place this close to the mount, which I find gets in the way and is easily uh, changed by accident. Whereas this one is right at the front of the lens as it is with so many other RF lenses and it works really well allowing you to change things like exposure compensation or ISO, depending on what you've set in the menu. It comes with a very shallow uh, lens hood, as you'd expect, being an ultra wide angle lens, plus the usual lens caps. It does extend a little bit when you're shooting with it. So it uh, extends the most at 15 millimeters and by about 28, it's fully retracted. And then 28 to 35, you don't see a huge amount of difference at all, which is nice. I don't think it's an issue. I don't think this is going to be pulling in a huge amount of dust. One thing I did notice, which was interesting, is, is this lens is almost identical in size and shape to the um, 24 to 70 uh, 2.8 RF lens. 
That has meant that I've actually accidentally grabbed the 24 to 70 when I meant to take the 15 to 35. So do bear in mind that you might want to put a sticker on it or just make it really clear so you're grabbing the right lens because you might miss that shot if you're spending a bit more time changing uh, lenses because you've picked up the wrong one. So just do bear that in mind. From filter size to everything else, it's exactly the same. That being said, being the same filter size is actually quite useful because it means you can have one set of filters, so a uh, set of 80 millimeter filters across both lenses. So it's quite nice that Canon's been able to, to achieve that with these. In terms of other things about this, I, I've mentioned that it's good for video and one thing about that is the autofocus is completely silent. I cannot perceive it at all in any of the test shots I've taken and I can barely hear it when I even hold it up to my ear. So that's a good thing. Canon's done a good job of keeping this quiet and it is very ergonomic, which is nice. I know I mentioned that it's a good shape, but it is ergonomic to use and feels good in the hand. For £2,200, I actually think this is good value for an ultra wide 2.8 lens, professional style lens, um, being fully weather sealed, etc. I, I would be happily use this on a day to day basis if I was a Canon shooter and I've really enjoyed using it. Um, I hope that we see similar lenses from Nikon, to be honest with you, that are a bit lighter, a bit smaller, a bit easier to take around with you, even if they're sort of pro level 2.8 lenses. So, yeah, overall, I've been really pleased with this lens and I would recommend it without any real reservations. I hope you found this uh, little review useful. If you have any questions about it, please do pop them in the comment section below. I'll try and help where I can. Equally, if you have any experiences of the lens, I'd love to hear what you think of it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe as it really does help and I do appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and I do hope I see you again next time. Goodbye.